What's up guys, my name is Hunter. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, thank you for stopping by. Today we are going to be talking about Mac apps. So five Mac apps that are going to help you in terms of workflow or just overall quality of life apps, basically. Some of them will have to do with more creative style work and some will be more just, you can use them no matter what you do on your MacBook. So let's jump into it. We're going to jump onto uh, my MacBook 16 inch M1 Pro over here and check out some of these apps. So let's get to it. So one thing to note is all of these apps I have downloaded via another app called Setapp. Now this video is not sponsored, but Setapp is basically a subscription service where you can pay a set amount a month depending on how many devices you wanna use it on. And then you can download any app that they have collaborated with and added to their store. So if we look on my screen here, I'm going to go over, let's see, to set app. So you open up the app and basically when you pay for it, you can download anything on here. There's a lot of things you probably haven't heard of and there's a lot of things you probably have. Uh, things like Clean My Mac, which is a controversial, controversial app, but that's on here and you get that just included with your subscription. Then there's things like Bartender, which is a pretty popular app that organizes the bar at the top of your screen. So it would basically take all of the icons that you have up at the top and it would shrink them into like a more organized menu and you can, you know, collapse it, so on and so forth. But basically there are like hundreds of apps that you can use. You can get this for your phone or your Mac and you can get a subscription plan where you can do both. Anyway, all of these apps come from Setapp. And so if you want to be able to use all of these at a pretty like easy price. Setup's going to be the way to go. Again, this video is not sponsored by them, but I do really enjoy what they offer, especially because I was paying subscriptions to a few of the apps that I have on Setup already. And so I canceled those and then I just pay one subscription and I can use any of these. So yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's jump right in. So the first app that we are going to be talking about today is going to be Aldente Pro. So Al Dente is a little app that looks like this. It's got this uh, spaghetti and noodles <laughs> icon. And what Al Dente basically is, is a battery tool. So up here in the menu bar that I have, we're gonna open it up, we'll open up the settings. So one thing that I have went back and forth between is how good Apple does at monitoring uh, battery charging. And if you have it plugged in most of the time, how well they do it, you know, knowing when to stop the charging and when to let the charging continue. They say that they monitor your usage and then, you know, it'll throttle the charging depending so that it doesn't hurt the battery. But since I have my MacBook connected to a dock about 95% of the time, my MacBook is usually at 100% and I rarely see it actually turn off the charging. So what Aldente does is it allows you to jump in and have your own settings and set things up however you want them. So right now it's off, so you can see my MacBook is at 96%, but now that I have opened up the app, you can see that it doesn't show that the MacBook's charging, and that's because I have it up here at a limit of 80%. Basically, right when it hits 80%, it will hold it there and it will stop it from charging so that it doesn't max out the battery and hold it there because technically it's not good for your MacBook to just be held at 100% or held very low for long periods of time. Right now, it is draining the battery, basically. It is not letting it charge while it's plugged in. And so it'll go down to 80 and then it'll kind of keep a steady flow as if it's just using the power coming out of the wall. And you can adjust the settings and how you want that to work. You can go in and you can change all the settings here, automatic discharge, but this app digs really deep. I'm not gonna go through all of the options, but if you ever worry about having your MacBook plugged in, you know, all the time to a dock and it just, you know, it automatically charges it for you, this is a way to kind of pause that and uh, monitor how you want it to charge and how you want it to affect your battery life. The next app we are going to look at is iStat Menus. So what iStat Menus is, is a way for you to monitor your MacBook, the CPU, the GPU, the fans, the memory, the SSD, the network, a whole lot of things. And so right here is gonna be 
the interface, the menu for the app. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want to see, but this is going to solely live up in your uh, menu bar up here. So you can see at the top, this right here is going to tell me my network in and out. So, you know, my, what I'm sending and what I'm receiving. And so if I'm downloading something, that number will go up or if I'm uploading something, it'll go up and I can kind of see my network speeds. And so you can monitor, you know, different things, uh, what's connected, what's taking a lot more uh, bandwidth. And then beside that, I have my memory. So it'll kind of tell you what is uh, being used, what's free, how much swap memory you're using, what apps are using a lot. And it uh, gives you a little bit more of an in-depth view of it. There is a way for you to do it on a MacBook, but you don't get uh, that much detail on it. So I like using this app specifically and I can see everything at the top. And then you can see beside that, I also have my CPU and my GPU. They both have a bar just going on how much of it is being used. And then my CPU has another little menu here that shows me all of the separate cores and what is going on under the hood in that regard. So I can see, you know, what cores are being stressed, how many are being stressed, if they're all being used. And you can kind of dig even deeper into this if you really want to. You can turn on, you know, your battery sensors, uh, your fan sensors. You can actually use this to turn on your fan and set your own set of rules for when the fan turns on, how long it can be on, uh, how powerful it can be as well, since MacBooks and all Apple products are kind of known to value quiet running over performance. And so sometimes, you know, the fans won't run as fast as they really should be running depending on your task. So as you can see, there are a lot of things that you can actually monitor here and you can dive even deeper into it than I have, but I just want to see, you know, the basics, my memory, my CPU, my GPU, and my uh, network. That is going to be one of my favorites. I always have that running and I like to see if I'm stressing my machine in any way, shape or form so that I can then, uh, kill apps or adjust things accordingly as needed. Uh, the next one, I don't really know how to pronounce it, Lungo, Lungo, but what this is, is just another menu bar item that goes up here. It is this little coffee mug that you see. And what it does is in short, it lets you keep your Mac awake. So most people are gonna have their screen saver set to a certain amount of time. And then they're also gonna have their screen just set to go, you know, turn off after a certain amount of time. So it's not just on indefinitely if you have it sitting on a table or you don't, you know, turn it off or close it all the time. And also let's say you have a video playing, you have files transferring and you don't want the screen to, you know, go to sleep. This is gonna be something that is super awesome. And since I do a lot of video work and also music work where there's you know, rendering or uploading, file transferring, I use this a lot. And you have all the options of if you wanna keep it awake indefinitely or for 30 minutes or an hour or 12 hours. And I know you can do this in the settings of the computer, but you have to go in and actually change just the ultimate setting of it every time. With this, you can just click on the little coffee mug and click how long you want your Mac to stay awake for and then it will, and you can turn it off at any point very easily just by going back to that icon at the top. That one's a pretty simple one. Let's move on to the next. So the next one that I want to show you is called Workspaces. Now, Workspaces is gonna be this little uh, tool icon up here, this uh, pliers icon, I believe. So what Workspaces is, is basically an automation tool. What this one is, is basically you set different workspaces for different things that you're doing on your computer, and then it can open up apps and run certain folders and you know do certain things depending on what you're want to do instead of opening up everything individually. So if I click on the pliers and let's say I want to work on music. So I'll just click on the music tab right there and it'll show me the apps or the programs I have that it, I wanted to open. I haven't dove super deep into this cause there are other options, but you know, if I open up the music one and I hit start, then it will automatically open up those apps. Now, of course it's opening up on my other screen, but we have, you can see down here that once it actually goes. There we go. So we have Ableton opened up and we also have Focusrite control down here. So both those are open now. And you know, those are two apps that I am always going to open up when I'm working on music. Then I also have, if I want to go in here and do video editing, Final Cut Pro for my video editing and Isotope RX8 for my audio repair and uh, my audio editing. And then, so you can dive really deep into this. I have streaming OBS and my GoPro webcam. And if I want to, you know, let's see, if I want to add another one so I can add a, you know, test workspace and then inside of it, I can do 
open up a certain file if I want to. I can open up applications, emails, websites, terminal URL, actions, shortcuts. You can actually run shortcuts inside of this. It works a lot like shortcuts, but it's meant just basically for uh, getting you to the workspace that you wanna get to as fast as possible. And I think that is super useful and super cool. Moving on, last but definitely not least, this is an app that I, again, just recently started using. Usually Notion is gonna be my notes app of choice, storyboarding, my script taking. Inside of Notion, I have a full template that I use for YouTube videos where I get a script and then a shot list and I you know, have a checklist of all the steps I need to take before I post a video and uh, before I start recording. That's what I normally use and I like Notion because it has so much flexibility. However, uh, one thing I had been missing was like, I, I wanted an easier app for writing out ideas and flow charts, basically. Um, so this app right here is called MindNode. I just started using it recently. I am still, you know, playing with it, but I really like this so far. Here's a little test one that I made for the video. And so as you can see in the middle here, I have keyboard YouTube video. So I got a new keyboard recently. I'll be making a video on that fairly soon. And then on that, then you have the stems of, you know, pre-edit, edit, post-edit, post script, shot list, and then those can stem off and you can just keep going and spider rubbing it out as kind of a, a mind map is what they call it. This is actually called a mind map. And then you can look at it in a task view. So outline, so this is more of like a note version. You can look at them at the same time like that. So here's my outline. And then here is my mind map. And then you just, you know, click the plus button and type in stuff. And then you can, you know, keep stemming off of that. And then you can stem off of those ones and it can just keep going. And so you can have a pretty in-depth organizational structure here for if you're trying to, you know, plan things out. And I think that this is a super cool app for anybody who does creative work or really anybody who has a job where they have to extensively plan things like YouTubers, for instance, or even videographers or photographers or people who do projects, this is gonna be something that you can use in many different ways. And I really enjoy how it works together. I went through a couple different versions of like this kind of app, but this one has so far been my favorite. Definitely go test that one out as well. So that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more apps that you, you know, should download on your MacBook or ones that you don't need to get a subscription for, let me know down in the comments. If you have other apps on set app that you enjoy better or just other apps in general that you think are must haves for MacBook owners, then leave those down in the description below. And if I see, you know, enough apps that are different from this or I find enough that I like as well, I will make another video. Maybe we'll do like a, a free and a paid one. We'll just kind of go from there. But that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, uh, leave a like or a comment down below. And, you know, I hate to do it, but hit the subscribe button. Maybe. And I also hope to see you in the next one. Yeah.